In addition to all the software we have recommended for your computer over the years, we've also shown you programs that we think should never be installed. Coming up, I've got several more to share with you. I'll explain why we don't think they should ever be installed, along with good alternatives to those programs. Let's dive right in. The first one out of the gate is the highly popular Kaspersky antivirus. The software, based in Russia, is primarily designed for computers running Windows and Mac OS. It also has a version for Linux that's available for business customers. Kaspersky Antivirus has a long history of being one of the best paid for programs, offering real-time protection, detection, and removal of viruses, trojans, worms, spyware, adware, and other junk. The inclusion of Kaspersky in this video will be controversial for some people. I get that. It really depends on where your country sides in the Russia-Ukraine war. A criticism or concern first reported by Bloomberg in 2017 reports based on internal company emails that Kaspersky has close ties to the Russian military and that they had been working with Russia's main intelligence agency, the FSB, developing security technology at the spy agency's behest. More recently, in June of 2024, the U.S. Department of Commerce placed a ban on Kaspersky, citing the Russian government's capability and intent to exploit Russian companies like Kaspersky to collect and weaponize sensitive U.S. information. Unlike a web browser, media player, and most other software, for antivirus software to work, it requires deep access to a user system operating at the kernel level. So not installing Kaspersky on your PC does make complete sense, especially for those of you living in countries that are not on the side of Russia at this time. As an alternative, if you're on Windows, the built-in virus and malware threat protection is much improved. It's good enough for most people who avoid risky behavior online. Bitdefender is also pretty good, offering both free and paid plans for Windows. And if you own a Mac, their antivirus also ranks very high as well and includes ransomware protection. Next up, Zoom is one that's made our list a couple times over the years. Gaining popularity a few years ago when people were forced to work from home, Zoom offers video and audio conferencing along with other tools for collaboration. Before getting to their latest controversy, here's a quick recap of their past issues. They've had numerous problems with security and privacy, some of which have still not been fixed. They failed to disclose to millions of Mac users that they had a secret web server, which could activate users' webcams without the user's permission. They leaked to complete strangers thousands of users' email addresses and user photos due to a contact database issue. Due to attacks from hackers, over half a million of its users' email addresses and passwords were made available for sale on the dark web. And recently, they've been involved in an AI controversy regarding their terms of service. Initially, their TOS allowed exclusive rights to use its users' data to train future AI models with no way for the customer to opt out. After much criticism, they clarified that they weren't going to use customer data for AI training and updated their terms of service. The bottom line with Zoom is I have zero trust with their leadership team and find their business practices to be shady. As an alternative to Zoom, WebEx by Cisco is one that's not getting the attention it deserves. And there's Microsoft Teams offering both free and paid programs that surprisingly has managed so far to stay out of controversy and the headlines with their Teams product. I know it can be tempting to download pirated software to save money. The bottom line just don't do it. Sometimes referred to as cracked software, these pirated programs on sites like the Pirate Bay are often riddled with malware, keyloggers, and spyware. Recent examples include cyber criminals distributing various types of malware through cracked versions of Microsoft Office, and Mac users are being targeted with compromised applications that when downloaded and run are executing multiple payloads in the background. If money is an issue, you may find free programs that will get the job done for you. As many of you know, we've done tons of videos highlighting the best free programs to use. And when you download any software from the internet, it's always best to download those programs from the official website. Media Player Classic Home Cinema is an outdated free program for Windows that people still use and recommend in the comments of our videos. Because it's no longer being updated to fix bugs and security issues, it should not be installed. It even says at the top of their webpage, MPCHC is not under development since 2017. Please switch to something else. 
If you need a good alternative that is still being updated, Media Player Classic Black Edition is available from the Microsoft Store. There's also VLC Media Player that will play your audio and video files, and Pot Player is also a solid choice as well. Screenshot is a free screen capture tool for Windows that also gets recommended by our viewers in the comments of our videos. Just like Media Player Classic, Home Cinema, Greenshot has not been updated since 2017 to fix security issues and bugs, so don't install it. If you need to take a screenshot, a good alternative built into Windows is the snipping tool. This is good for basic screenshots. And there's also my personal favorite, which I use daily, called ShareX. It's also free and open source with tons of features. Now for a quick rundown of programs mentioned in prior year's videos we still don't recommend to be installed. The password manager, LastPass, has been hacked themselves on more than one occasion with copies of their customer database and password vault being stolen. A far better alternative to LastPass is Bitwarden. This highly trusted password manager offers both free and paid plans. We still don't recommend using CCleaner for clearing out invalid registry items and unwanted files. I've disclosed their issues in the past, including shady data collection practices, installing programs without the user's permission, along with other issues. You're better off just using the utilities built into the operating system. If you feel you must use a system cleaning utility app, Microsoft does have their PC Manager app available from the Microsoft Store. For those of you that grew up in the 90s, you'll likely remember RealPlayer. Sadly, this terrible media player is still around today and people actually use it, probably because they don't know any better. If I went through all of the issues over the years, this would be a 20 minute segment. I'll just sum it up with this. RealPlayer was named by PC World as number two in its list of the top 25 worst tech products of all time. You're better off using one of the recommended media players I mentioned earlier in this video. The freemium Ola VPN should still be avoided. They log users' data, sell user data to partners and third parties, and by using their free version, users consent to having their device as part of a botnet where the bandwidth is shared with other users. As an alternative, Proton VPN, based in Switzerland, is one of the most trusted. There's no logging of user data, sharing of data with third parties, and there are no data limits. The BitTorrent client, uTorrent, the file sharing platform should still be avoided as well. They've had issues with adware, bundleware, and the installation of a cryptocurrency miner without the user's consent. The free and open source Qubit Torrent, what we recommend as an alternative if you're looking for a trusted BitTorrent client. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments what software you would recommend for others to never use, and what alternatives would you suggest that they use instead. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date with our latest software videos and other tech-related stuff.